So in this video, we are going to show you how a certain action can fit into Gentile's taxonomy. We'll be using the example of juggling a soccer ball in a straight line during a game. Here we have our friend Bree demonstrating that action goal for us. In order to teach you this, it's important to identify the critical factors used in the action. This is a diagram showing the human gait cycle. However, with running, the stance phase is shorter than the swing phase. This is just to show you that everyone's legs go through these movements. Flexible factors are the movements that can vary across individuals performing the same action. For example, here we have my partner, Jess, performing the action, and you can see she doesn't do it exactly like Brie. And even Brie can't even perform the same action the same way. Using a table of Gentile's taxonomy, the action of dribbling a soccer ball during a game will be classified as 2D because it involves body transport with an object over stationary regulatory conditions, and the game provides inner trial variability. Now let's say, for example, we have a patient that has suffered a knee injury. We have used Gentile's taxonomy as a guideline to see where she is in respect to the action, and that determines that the most she can do is stand there, which is 1A, the simplest action possible. We can make it difficult for her by having her stand on either one foot or on her tiptoes to make her base of support smaller. Knowing this, we would work with her to strengthen the muscles stabilizing her knee until her abilities had improved enough that we can add an object. Here, we have added a soccer ball, which has advanced her to 1B because she is using an object. To give her a challenge without going outside of the box, her training could involve soccer taps, which, as you can see here, involves keeping the ball in place. Or we can have her kick the ball back and forth while staying in place. Because her body is not changing location, it can still be defined as body stability. To make things even harder for our patient, we can even change the size of the object. Here we have made our ball considerably smaller, and as you can see, it is quite difficult for her to kick back and forth. We continue to have our patient perform exercises to strengthen the muscles until our patient is able to run in a straight line, which is classified as 1C. To make this action harder for her, we can either have her running in figure eights, which utilizes both halves of the body equally, or we could even have her run backwards. We would then keep increasing the difficulty and complexity of her movements until our patient is able to perform in our desired box of the taxonomy. Remember, our desired goal for the action was in 2D because it involved body transport with an object, using stationary regulatory conditions and inner trial variability. Peter out of D, Mr. Fett on the track, got another Here we go. Hey. Down, 